Hello, and welcome back to Hourglass Season 2, Episode 17. I have been busy, but I forgot to record anything <laughs> uh, for about a week. Um, I just, I kept getting on the server and just wanting to play and do some stuff and things. So what I would like to do now is just walk through a few of the projects that I've been working on this week, starting with this area that we find ourselves in at the moment uh, with all the torch and stones and stuff. This is a storage area for the current project for the seats for the server. So the month of June, we're working on a castle altogether. Now I did not help at all with the planning and I incorrectly said, I think it was two episodes ago that these guys were working in creative together. Nope, nope. Uh, they have been planning this all out in entirely in survival, like over the edge of a mountain uh, with wool blocks, which are not necessarily the easiest block because there is really basically no instamine so as you're marking a shape out if you don't like it and you want to like reset it uh it does take a little bit of time also i am really bad at jumping around on it <laughs> uh but anyway i did a couple streams over here where i was helping out now this section was done by not humo and he was really working on kind of establishing not just how the palette was going to be used, but also some of the detailing. And then the big section in the middle was done by Glorious Wolf, and he started to detail his. Now, I, I didn't help detailing, uh, but this one that's directly beneath us, I put that one up. Now, it didn't have an indicator of how tall it went, so I didn't want to go too much taller because I kind of think they want each of the different towers to be different levels. So where this one started about two, three blocks lower than that one, and it's bigger at the base, I was like, maybe it's going to be a shorter, stumpier tower. So I didn't go up far, very far, but the palette can continue up if need be. Uh, one of the things that I really tried to do on this first one was match it as much as I could to what Not Humo appears to be doing. And now, if you guys remember, this is part of the reason why our glass is the way it is. I call it a limited time community build challenge server. <laughs> uh, and what that means is that we work together to build things. And now this is probably the most um, like actual cohesive we've done because multiple of us are, have had our hands in this build already. Now, most of the time it is, we're sticking to a style, but we're all doing different builds. So what I'm trying to do is really match what not Humo was doing here, where there is the cobble and the tuff in the background. So what I'm calling these are the support walls. And then there is exterior detail and then interior detail. Let me show you what I meant by the interior detail. So this section right there with the walls. So basically there's kind of three levels to this is how I'm imagining it in my mind. Um, so this is the structure wall and then we're gonna push and pull some details out of it. So there'll be the structural supports around the outside that are similar. And then there'll be the windows and the walls uh, that help add depth. So what I noticed that Not Humo did that I really liked is that there is these two blocks, the cobblestone and the tuff, are a bit darker in shading. So if you put those as the structure wall, now when you put the outside details on, it helps push them back uh, because they're darker. So it creates both a difference in the texture because the outside blocks, as you can tell, have none of the cobble or the tuff, so it creates a texture difference and a little bit of a tonal difference. So I really tried to keep it the same here to match uh, since this is the entrance from the um, nether to the to the whole complex. And then over here, not uh, so not Humo did this one and then Glorious Wolf did the big tower. And you'll see that even in those two towers, uh, they approached the texturing differently. So this isn't a mixture of cobble and tuff. It is a straight up gradient. So there is tuff all along the bottom and it kind of like um, pokies up, spikes up. 
and then everywhere where there is tuff, there is cobble on top of, and then it breaks up into the other lighter gray blocks. So since this tower was directly attached to that one, I wanted to match this style over here. So my, my two areas that I was working on are completely different, <laughs> but they match that part of the structure. And I think it's kind of cool. Uh, so I did this wall, th or like this block, this block, uh, this little outset here, like uh, entryway, and then I did this tower back here. And then that's why I'm like, I feel kind of bad because totally should have time lapsed that stuff. But since I was streaming it and going back and forth for materials, I didn't, uh, I didn't have a schematic, so I never knew kind of what materials I wanted at the time. So it wouldn't have been a very good schematic or a very good replay, but I do feel bad that you guys can't see it going up because uh, this, the three, four areas I worked on is a couple hours each. Um, so about two and a half hours here and about two hours here. And that's mostly because I spent a lot of time really trying to understand, and it's so simple, it like it looks so simple, it's such a simple set of blocks, it's basically all things gray. Uh, but I did want to, to kind of really understand how other people were doing it, and I think, I think it's looking really cohesive as a unit, and when we start to get even more of the smaller structures and the roof lines in, and then uh, some of these walls, and I'm not sure what this is, like if it's a walkway, um, I hadn't, like, I hadn't even touched this side yet because I've got to visit with the guys about what the, what they're going for here because this to me looks like a walkway across some of this, which is going to be super cool, but uh, I, I just stuck with the structures that I understood from the wool markings uh, and you can see that I even didn't do, like, the top part because to me that's detailing. I didn't want to mess it up by trying to just put a smattering of blocks because um, to me it looks like the detailing part has a lot of polished andesite which I haven't even been using over here yet. So I'm like, mm, okay, I'm just gonna do walls for now. But then I also uh, went underground because every time we were working here, I was hearing noises down underground. And let me just show you guys this. Uh, I turned here first, or I kept going this way and it got quieter. And so then I turned here uh, and went down. I'm, I'm really, really terrible at finding st sounds under the um under the ground so this was me poking all around for where the cave sounds were coming from and i kept like losing uh the sound of it yeah i missed it by like three blocks there was a zombie in here uh and when i got underground here it actually opened up quite a bit uh so what i decided to do was to take a break from those walls ouch uh, and I came down here to start light. Okay, of course, it's like really not showing that it opened up, but I promise it did. There's like huge amounts of caves everywhere down here. Uh, but it's, it's all like really, oh, oh, I didn't do a great job apparently. Hi, buddy. Uh, hello? Let me out. Um, where did you come from? I missed a spot. Hi. <laughs> and now, uh, so yeah. I wonder if you came from down there. I don't have torches on my inventory right now because I cleaned up. Uh, but basically what I did was I uh, tried anyway to make it completely mob proof. I obviously didn't. Uh, but yeah, we also found a huge uh, mine shaft. <laughs> I look like I've just been caving. Uh, we found a huge mine shaft um, that I, at deep slate level that I actually took a couple hours to uh, go through now. I wasn't in the mine shaft the whole time. It didn't take me two hours to completely light it and clear it, but I did spend about two hours uh, trying to get the deep slate caves attached to it completed. And in that time, I found three skeleton spawners, a spider spawner and a skelly spawner. And that was all the loot that we got um, from from in both the mine shaft and the... Um, the <laughs> The mine shaft and the caves. Now I didn't keep everything. We got some rails up topside, uh, and then we also got um, something else. Oh, like um, all the berries and seeds and stuff. I did keep everything out of the chest. I just uh, went around and I popped all the chests uh, <laughs> and kept them. But then this was all of the ore I got, and I didn't even get like I didn't mine all the ore. The only thing I made an effort to mine every time I saw it was these three. 
Uh, and I did mine a lot of lapis just because I think it's a really pretty block and I want to use it uh, in a future terraforming project. So these were the only ones that I made an effort to grab, but these caves are now mostly lit up so people can come back down here and get more um, mining if they want, more ores and stuff uh, in kind of a safe way. It's a little bit cramped and let's see if I can get back out of here. <laughs> uh, while I'm navigating my way out, how about, how about this? How about I leave you, uh, with the next oop, project that I've been working on. I'll get myself out of the caves and, uh, meet you over there. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, I made it out of the cave, and we are at the other area that I spent a lot of time in this week. Um, so I don't know, I, I can honestly not remember if I ever have shown the mining area on on my episodes. We've been over here a couple times on stream, uh, but it didn't look like this very, very, uh, very much until this week. So originally let me give you guys a couple landmarks here over here we have our villager outpost and uh there is a that's where the big tunnel goes to that we did for the mining mesa raid farm and nether tunnel or and um the mesa the desert and the raid farm so that's actually the big major one so you can just uh while you're standing while you come through there you can get your bad omen and then we have the stacking raid farm out there over the ocean. Uh, and it is by, I believe, Ian X04. And the server member who put it on the server is Virtuositas. Um, and now the the reason why he had picked this location is because there was actually a village uh, basically right here. <laughs> um, so we had a sand village here. And I got very close to accidentally triggering a raid here instead of there. Uh, one of the days where I killed the people over there and then I realized, oh, I wanted to drop some stuff off in my ender chest. So I kind of like, I was flying out there and then I turned and went this way and I got really close to the village. So I was like, hmm, let's not have a village here anymore. Uh, Vert had already taken all the workstations out, but in the off chance that someone had come by and put like a barrel down or something, I didn't want there to be one villager who made it a valid village. Uh, so I cleared the village out and then I was like, Ooh, it looks kind of bad. Uh, just as like, you know, where all the village pieces were torn out. So I was like, let's just continue to, uh, mine some sand. And I've pretty much flattened like all of this area. There was a, a chunk of sand that had been dug from like here to that far side. Um, but I came in and brought it all down to this level. <laughs> Basically, I spent several hours out here. I don't know. These are all the empty shulkers, but I had like two barrels full of sand, sandstone, stone uh, that I had taken back over. And any of the lava pits that I found, I was using lava to smelt stone while I was in the area just because we don't have very much smooth stone. So I was like, yeah, let's do that too. So uh, in the time that I've been out here, <laughs> I had a visit from three wandering traders. <laughs> now I only, I lost one of the heads. I don't know where it went. Uh, but we got all those mini blocks and all these mini blocks. So basically this is like where you go to farm stuff. <laughs> uh, because yeah, I spent so much time out here in the overworld and I was the only one on the server. So I got three separate, three separate wandering traders spawn in a row. Um, and then the other thing that I will point out just because I know we haven't I know I haven't shown this one. Uh, we have a copper and trident farm. I'm pretty sure it's primarily tridents. Like I think uh, Munch said it wasn't really dropping very much copper, but it is a massive bang up uh, cop or tri trident farm. We have over two and a half shulkers of tridents and I did max enchant some uh, for the server members at uh back at spawn i almost went into the nether but i don't need to um because we have one more project that zelda wants to kind of uh show you guys that i i know i haven't yet so let's go let's go there next all right so thank you guys for bearing with me while i just buzz all around the server i didn't want to uh make you guys have to travel along with me but if you recognize this area this is our main nether hub so the portal directly behind me goes to spawn and then we have one of each of these tunnels that goes off in the cardinal directions and what i wanted to show you guys here is that i spent some time 
getting some fire resistance ready for each of the tunnels uh, and then also getting the um, we had two of these respawn anchors but then I got a bunch of glowstone at the gold farm while I was up there enchanting the um, the tridents because uh, the gold we're able to trade with the uh, or we were able to put in the piglin bartering that's up there but then we also trade the rotten flesh that comes from the farm to there i think there's 12 or 18 clerics up there uh and then i use the emeralds from them to get the glowstone now the fire res and the respawn anchors is what helped me with my final project and let's hopefully not yes oh i almost got it I almost got the turn, uh, but I spent another couple hours, uh, like where I was mining. I also spent several hours down here also. Um, so I cleared out a whole huge section and what I was going to show you guys is we found, oh, it's like two thirds of a stack. Um, and I am ready and geared up, uh, to go again and I found a system that really works amazingly well for me because what I do is I'm, I'm used to using my silk touch pick but what I've been doing is if you go mining with your fortune and then anytime you get to, you get to a pocket of gold or um, quartz you mine that and your pick stays almost perfectly like I was able to go for almost three hours before I started like needing a break and realized hey let's <laughs> let's let's let let's let everyone know what I've been up to this week uh so I took a break for recording uh but yeah I'm pretty pretty proud that it's probably not the most efficient like there's probably a better way I could get um in three hours get more ancient debris but again like I said I'm, I'm trying to just stay down here so I was mending my pick so I got uh over nine stacks of gold and a shulker and a half of quartz so I I'm pretty proud of all of the stuff that I've done so far and sounds like there's one like right around the corner hello okay that's not freaky at all they're all right in that corner so what I think I'm gonna do now I'm gonna take a break from uh, resource gathering and I think I'm going to try to finish a couple more things up at spawn. I really, 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 really need to focus on the storage. Um, I, it's kind of it's kind of sad the condition I've left it in for so long. Uh, but I have just this like sad mental break against it. Uh, so I'm gonna go try and work my way through that and I will bring you back in uh, to let you know what I do get up to next because if it's not storage, I, I I'll, I'll tell you what it is then. <laughs> uh, but it, it should be storage. It should be storage. And welcome back. I have a couple updates to go through. Um, so where we just left off, I said I was going to go be uh, responsible Zelda and start working on the last touches of the decentralized storage that we've had going for a couple months now uh and and I uh kind of pretty much have um there's there's one thing though that I've got to show you first and I did actually uh it bothered me that I didn't have a full stack so I stayed out for the rest of that night that I was mining debris and I'm just like you know what it's too late to start anything else so I am going to go ahead and just keep mining so I ended up with over a stack of ancient debris to get ready for uh, new armor and tools and stuff and it's especially important now this other stuff is what I got um, from the entirety of a uh, caving session that I did with Vault Dweller 32 yesterday that I will talk about in just a moment after I show you guys what's in this box. <laughs> uh, some of this, it should be obvious that the server is now updated to 119. <laughs> uh, so I don't have a few things that you guys might be used to seeing right now, namely the rainbow bar, um, my Vex wings and uh, like the dark GUI. So between last cut and this cut, there's a couple like cosmetic differences, but I've got most of my mods working. 
And what Vault and I did yesterday was we went and we tried to, uh, we went to some of the new unloaded chunks and we tried to find the deep dark. <laughs> um, and there's, there's a reason for it. I promise. I promise. It's entirely for my storage uh, because I need some of the new 119 items to make sure that they go somewhere in our sorting system. So I promise, I promise, it wasn't just entirely all about experiencing the new uh, 119 update because I also got the mangrove stuff, which this isn't a good example. This is kind of my leftover box, uh, but we were we were uh, down in the cave. So I was like, you know what, while we're down here and exploring, I was just picking up everything I could. Um, and this actually isn't all the diamonds. Uh, I might have put some of my diamonds away because we had like 20 diamonds or so between each of us. Um, not sure what I did with the diamonds. That's concerning, but let me take you guys topside real quick. I probably, we should have started up there. Uh, I didn't think this through. Ouch. <laughs> so yeah, this is one of the reasons why the storage hasn't been getting worked on. Um, although, ouch, this would have given it away, uh, the 119 update if we had started here. So pants are admin. Pants, pants are nice, our admin uh, got kind of an accumulation of some of the um 119 stuff he did find the city there's one ancient city within our current world borders which means we might expand the world um and or reset chunks if we need more than that one i don't know that we need more than one um but he did he did mention that it's uh several thousand blocks out so he he kind of did a little bit of legwork for us just so that uh we would know that to make sure that there is one within our current world border and then uh, getting a little disoriented. I spent some time, uh, so if you guys remember many, many eons ago, this is all of the storage stuff that I'm working on currently, and I started to gather up all of the varieties of 119 blocks. And uh, this box here is going to be for all the skulk and skulk related things. Uh, so I promise, I promise my adventuring was totally, was totally intentional. Uh, we just, we were unsuccessful to find any deep dark or the ancient city. Um, even though we did find a bunch of brand new, like massive caves. Um, so that's unfortunate, but I think Vault is going to continue that mission and I'm going to focus on connecting up some of these storages. So one of the things that I'd like to take you back here and remind you, so this is the light storage build. And originally we had a, um, like just a, we'll call it a dry drop. I don't know what else to call it, but we have this dry drop here. And so what we're trying to do for all the builds that have the sorting components ready, what I am doing is I am coming in and digging the trenches to them so that we can feed the items to each of the storages. So before I started working today, and that's where that's where we started out over there, um, I've got three of the trenches completed, or well, mostly completed, and, but I wanted to bring you back in right now to give an update. So these trenches, uh, I had to come in and what I'm using is I'm using packed ice, which you can see there underneath a slab. And then I'm using regular ice to place here and then break with my fist so that I don't have to carry a bunch of water buckets around or worry about going back and forth to my water source that was over there. So I have to go and make all of these uh, little, we'll call them links. These are my links, my, my, my waterway links. Uh, so that the items continuously travel. So this one here is the redstone slash tinkerer. And what, what we'll see on each one of these, now I'm not going to go in there because otherwise I'm going to get stuck. But now where the dry drop is on the light storage that we just fell down, now we have the water vaders. So the redstone tinkerer, a uh, uh, Neomis Electra got the, oh, I'm going to get stuck up there, got the redstone build ready for us. And it has a sorting system in it. So I linked that one up and then I dug this trench is the next trench and that splits off. And this one goes up to Oceana, which if you guys remember, that's the coral storage that is um, down in that like hole in the ground. And then this one here is the next one that we're on right now. So I just wanted to show you guys kind of in addition to making these links with the waterway and peeling off what I'm trying to do and I probably should have, oh, I'm playing with music on because there's new music in 119. 
And last night when we were caving, Walt mentioned that um, <laughs> there's a song, especially for the deep dark, that we were trying to get to play uh, to tell us if we were close. Uh, I don't know if I heard it last night, but I did hear a song that I wasn't familiar with, and it had some kind of creepy vibe. So I'll have to I'll have to uh, find out what the actual deep dark sound is. But that's why you guys are hearing actual game music right now um, in the background a little bit. But this one here goes out to the hostel storage build and one of the things that I've been doing is I've been placing the packed ice here and I go up the whole drop and then I come back down punching the punching the blocks on my way down and it creates the water sources uh, so then when I get down to the block that's right above the soul sand then it uh, becomes a bubble vader and sends me back up to the top so I have gone between the surface and this underground section of tunnels many many times uh so we'll see we'll see how much uh how much more i'm able to get done but i'm like I'm, I'm in a good stride i'm i'm doing really well i feel like so what i've got to do is we've got a couple more areas that are ready for their trenches to be dug uh and get their water links in so the next area i'm gonna go is right here to the botanist slash flower storage and then to the amethyst and it also has passive mobs um so what's going to happen at the amethyst build let's see can i get up there let's try this i'm not gonna die i'm not gonna die trying to fly in tight enclosed spaces not at all um okay well we made it up successfully but now i can't remember which block is safe to break to get out <laughs> this might be a bad okay well that's an outside block um uh okay well this this didn't work <laughs> the way I was going to show you. But basically, the amethyst sorting system, so what's going to happen is the water vader is going to come up here and any items that come into this storage slice that are not amethyst are going to go right through this build into the build behind it, which um, somehow I will get to soon. But for now, I'm going to... I'm gonna sign off here because uh, I'm kind of in a precarious position that I don't want to break any more of the build or any of the storage uh, and then I'll be back with you guys in a little bit for the next update.
and welcome back from that time lapse guys i tried something new uh hopefully it worked out pretty well i've been watching a lot of minecraft youtubers lately and they all seem to have these cool like cut sections where it shows like especially when they're like mining or something uh it just shows them getting the boop uh, and uh, so I tried to do that with the sections of the storage that we were working on where I showed how each tunnel was being dug and then my placement of the ice uh, links and then how I was setting the filters. So hopefully that was kind of cool. It was definitely a bit different for me for editing. So yeah, uh, definitely let me know what you think. <laughs> if, I, if I should do that more or talk more instead, uh, if that was too jarring. But what I thought I could do with you guys right now is go through what the storage, how the storage is gonna work. So basically what we have right here, we call this our OG storage build. And now it was the first a full completed build. Now for a long time we didn't have a back wall to it. I was using that to fly in and out of and then somebody, some kind soul came in and put in a wall and I couldn't keep flying in and out of it. Uh, but basically this has been here since day two of the server and it used to have, um, if you guys remember, it used to have like a like inside area here with like another set of chests and then uh, as we have started to create these buildings out here that have all the storage stuff in them, we've slowly been moving items out. So now that we have more storages hooked up, like I can get this stuff moved over uh, to the passive mob drops. Same thing with all of the honey items, can get those moved over to the passive mob drops. So we only have a couple more actual builds to do. Uh, and once we get the builds in, then we'll be able to clear all of this stuff out. I'm thinking namely the terracotta right now. We don't have anywhere else to store the terracotta, but this is going to be the drop off zone for the storage now. So what Orin has here are the actual chests that we can drop items off into, and then it's going to sort from here through the multi-item sorter in the mountain and go out to all the builds. So from those chests, it actually comes down here. We're gonna have to make a nice entryway into this. And what it does is it'll come down there. It goes through a couple different separators. There's a shulker unloader. So when there's shulker boxes that come through, it puts the shulker out and unloads the items. And then it pops the shulkers off uh, so that empty shulkers, I believe they end up over here. I'm pretty sure this is where the empty shulkers will come out. And then all of the items get dropped from the shulker unloader and from the items themselves, they come down this and they go into this cobweb. And then this is what goes out over to the multi-item sorter. And uh, that, uh, that this, is, this is my understanding. It's magic. <laughs> so I had cleared this space out for Orin and he put this contraption in quite a while ago. We've had a couple mini tests. Mm. <laughs> we've had a couple mini tests uh where we've sent stuff through to the first couple filter areas we had so like the lumberjack and the blacksmith or not the blacksmith the stone quarry uh items have been set in their filters for a while so that water that we just came from over there comes to this underground and up this dropper and then all of these you guys just saw me set so like the wood slice we've had set for a while and now this is why I couldn't put in the um, mangrove stuff. I don't think there's enough space and I know there's not enough space over in the lumberjack. So when we get to the, which one is it? The 119, yeah, the mangrove wood's gonna be separated from the lumberjack, which is a little unfortunate, but I just, I couldn't, uh, I looked at the storage build over there and couldn't find a way to make it work. So the wood slices have been set, the stone quarry slices have been set, and I had put a sign on Oceana because I was gonna set it one day and then never got over here. So everything from here over, I set today. So Oceana, Redstone Tinkerer, Botanist, Hostile Mob, uh, this one to be determined in the future. We have an extra slice uh, Which means which is good because if there's anything we forgot we can have kind of a miscellaneous box um, But also you'll see that where there's still block fillers We've got spaces in these too, and I don't 
I, I wasn't keeping up with the update, so this one might not be all of the 119 blocks that are collectible, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, so we definitely have a lot more expansion spaces in some of these, uh, and some of them we don't really. And what you'll see is with the second phase items, is it, all of these items are gonna pass through the top build. So like the Mason build is gonna have filters for all of these items. And then the cold storage is going to pass through that and go to the next leg. Um, and then that way, because we did so many second phases, we didn't have to have a slice for everything. Cause like if we had just had one single slice for amethyst, uh, that would have been a lot of wasted inventory space. So we tried to pack them as well as we could so that there wasn't too many empty spaces but that they kind of fit categorically uh so without further ado i think what i'm gonna do um oh actually wait let's follow one of these slices down just because i wanted to kind of show you the whole process one time through so once it goes through these items say it is a piece of one of these items here uh this 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 piece of magic uh, detects that, hey, it matches something in this chest. And so then it shoots it through this set of hoppers down underneath into the cobweb. And these cobwebs in these uh, redstone areas is to align the items so that they fall straight down the center uh, so that they don't spit out everywhere. So what happens on this slice here is it comes out in that cobweb, falls down here, goes around all through this water area, do, 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 uh, takes a turn here and then it shoots up the mountain to where our blacksmith is. So actually, you know what, let's go ahead and do this one. I think I can get out of this with a pearl. We're gonna, we're gonna find out if, if I get stuck in here, it's, it's totally intentional. <laughs> we're gonna find out. I don't know if it's completely enclosed. Uh, this one actually, I think maybe, yeah, whoops, my bad. Um, but I know how to get out of here. So let's go this way. I've, I've not had to break out of these that much. I promise. I promise. Okay. So let's put our dirt back and then, um, let's do, I'm trying not to break anything outside either. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Let's pearl. Nope. Pearl. Thank you. Um, and then we'll do stone, stone brick and dirt. I think that was the order. That looks funny. Hold on. Is that how I had that? That doesn't feel right. That does not feel right at all. All right, let's put the dirt. Oh, that stone just disappeared. Okay. Uh, or that dirt just disappeared. Well, <laughs> uh, it'll be down here. So that water fader that we just came up, it goes through, it, and it's, it's kind of weird how it's set up back there, but it goes through the coal items and then it goes through this line of items. So Hopefully that stone should be right there. Yes, okay, so this is our extra hopper. Um, so I built in overflow to each of my storages in case something falls in. Uh, and after digging out those waterways down below, I think I'm totally going to have to check some of the overflow areas uh, because I was dropping torches, I was dropping stones when I was digging, I was dropping glass or ice. So some of these uh, overflows might have other things in them. So we'll find out. But that should hopefully give you guys a big overview of why this process has taken so long is because we had to build the majority of the systems so that we would know where the waterways would connect. And then also we had to dig all the trenches and the waterways and we put in the ice links and everything. So I unfortunately, I, I just finally caved and there are some builds that aren't completed at the moment. So this one right here is where the mason was supposed to be. So you'll see that uh, tentatively, this is where the waterway is going to come up and then items are gonna come in here. I gave each one of the builds that has a sorting slice that doesn't have a build yet, one of these kind of temporary setups. So you'll see this one up here on the top of the hill also got a temporary setup also. And this is the one that is future to be determined. So yeah, see this is, I was dropping stuff into each of these uh, water canals. So each one of the areas that doesn't have a build has a temporary setup so that we don't lose items um, until we can get these builds in. So this is where the 119 is gonna go. 
and I had a cool idea for this one. I think this might be where we start off next time. I'm in the mood for some terraforming, uh, and I've got I've got a couple of cool ideas for this area, and hopefully hopefully my neighbor Deb here uh, takes a liking to this area. She was she's like, no, it's gonna bring down the value of the market stalls uh, to have a stinky swamp next to us, but I think I can make it look really cool. So I think without any further ado, we're not gonna test the storage system yet, just because I don't want to stress the system them because there are so many areas that are still that that don't have a um, proper storage set up yet but next episode we should have everything completed I'm going to grind some builds out I'm going to encourage other people on the server to build with me and get spawn completed 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 uh 100% we, yeah that's that's the goal that's the goal <laughs> bye